mentioned this earlier, it's an adjustable push rod for measuring our height, is take a dry erase marker and we're going to color the tip. Oh yeah, thanks, because this is the theory with the hundred thou extra. Ah. Hey, welcome back, Bass Monty's Garage. This is part 14, believe it or not, of our engine rebuild. The last episode we put our harmonic balancer on because today we need to go through measuring our push rods because we're going to put our rockers on, measure our push rod height, make sure we're at the right distance, and I'll explain why. So to get things started, and if you're new here, thanks for joining. This is how we got here. Lifter broke, had to take the engine out of the car, and let's not do that again. <laughs> So, let's get started. All right, team. So, clearly I have a set of lifters already in the engine. And I mentioned this earlier. It's an adjustable push rod for measuring our height. Um, this one is from Comp Cams. And I think it's an older generation model. They have a newer one that has graduation lines on uh on the rod and it does not have these lock nuts the reason i like the newer one and not this one is i can't put this into i can't put it in because this nut's in the way so we're going to do a little work around so i'm going to take this actually is already set at the same height as my current rods but this is a good way to to go through the whole process so i'm going to actually take this apart and put it back together but inside the motor and upside down so there's my workaround for this particular adjustable rod so like I said the newer rods I don't think have those lock nuts on it and you can just slip it right right through the uh, the correct bore this is our mission if you guys notice this little wear mark right in the center of the valve stem that's exactly what you want to see when you pull your engine apart now if you have brand new lifters you're not going to see any mark and that's what we have to measure for so what we're going to do is take a dry erase marker and we're going to color the tip the reason we're using dry erase is that we want that to easily come off when we're doing our measuring here so we put a rocker on, <clears throat> excuse me, and our lock nut, and I'm just checking for lash, I want zero lash. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to pick up the, the rod, and as soon as I don't get, when I get zero play, that's at zero lash. So just like we would do um, for setting our lash, we're going to do one half turn, of preload, and now we're good to go. So we're going to cycle the, I'm going to cycle the engine a couple times to get this uh, to rub off that dry erase mark. Okay, so we put a couple cycles in. Let's see, let's see how we did. Take our nut off. And see where that line is left? There's our wear pattern. I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing on the intake valve, which I should have done the first time. But I'm gonna do the intake valve and see where we end up. And let's see how we did. There we go. Pretty close to dead center. So what we do is we do this several times and just you can play with the length of this push rod and you can start moving that line back and forth on the valve stem. So I'm going to leave this one and we'll do our exhaust valve. I'll change the length. Uh, of the of the push rod and we'll see how if we can 
move that line at all. Okay, so this is number two. I actually lengthened the push rod by a hundred thousandths. Actually, every turn of the nut, adjust a nut, is fifty thousandths. So I did two full turns. I'm going to remark my valve here. And we'll see if we can move that line. Okay, let's see how we did. That looks perfectly centered. <clears throat> All right, guys, I'm going to do the same thing, but with two different push rods. They're about 150 thou. Uh, this one's longer, by about 150. I didn't, didn't do the exact math yet. And this is what I was using with my other lifters. So we're going to do our little experiment. And... I will show you, hopefully this determines that we're going to pick the longer rod. See how we did here. And I turned the light off so there's less reflection. Oh yeah. So... I don't know if you can tell, but this line is slightly above center line, and this line is perfectly on the center line. So I'm going to go with those push rods, and I'll show you the difference on the bench. All right, guys, back at the bench. So I mentioned um, that valve on the right, which was perfect. I thought it was 150 thou longer than the butler rod. And I was wrong. It's actually a hundred thou based on the calipers there. And uh, it's kind of a head scratcher for me. So I had to phone a friend. And uh, well, that friend is Butler Performance. <laughs> um, so I had to make sure that I wasn't losing my mind uh, because I wanted to run with these longer rods, which were, were pulled from my motor when I was running flat tap at lifters. So I asked them, hey, can I can I run with these? And they basically said, um, no, you shouldn't. <laughs> so I'm like, ah, great. Um, so, so now what? And I talked about our findings. And if I was losing my mind about, you know, the valve on the right that had the perfect wear pattern in the middle, and then the butler rod was a little high. And, you know, they said that they kind of leaned towards that. And... You know, I'm, I'm really, you know, I really struggled with that. So I put some more thought into it, and I realized that when I was watching my lifters move while I was doing the measurement, so if we have our lifter, say a cross-section view, there's the roller, you know, inside the lifter, there's basically a plunger with a spring and a check valve, and it gets filled with oil from the engine, from the 80-pound pressure, right? Um, there's no oil in the engine. So I was watching the push rod as I cycled the motor and it actually moved and I measured it a hundred thousandths. So the, when I would cycle the engine and the lifter would move up, the rod wouldn't move and I measured the distance and it was a hundred thousandths. So, oh, so I'm like, okay. And then I realized, you know, when there's oil in the motor, this slop is taken up by oil pressure, almost 80 to 100% of it. So if we take that 100 thousandths and we add it to this rod, this rod will come out in the middle when it's operating. That's interesting. Then I looked up on Comp Cam's website. They have a very good tech article on how to measure your uh, push rod length and they specifically say to use a solid lifter you know why it's because of this hundred thou slop you can literally pick the wrong rod oh my gosh crazy stuff i learned in this hobby so we're good we're gonna use 
the butler rods that are actually measuring a little too short but when they're operating with oil pressure they're going to come out to the right length because this is the theory with the hundred thou extra ah so i'm going to go ahead and put these in the motor and then show you guys how to adjust valve lash correctly hooray all right team that concludes part 14a which was measuring your push rod height and i hope you learned something if you did learn something hit that like button but more importantly subscribe if you haven't done so already because you do not want to miss the rest of this engine build to get it back in the car so i can we can go driving again and get some killer footage oh man what a process so again thanks for hanging out and until next time you know the drill building fast driving faster see ya